Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Dave Butler. I'm Stefan Tager. This is Revival, the Good News Podcast. Old friends, welcome. New friends, welcome. Stefan and I have been longtime friends. We uh, taught together, seminary together, institute together. Stefan went and got nerdy on us, and now he um, is a professor of religion <laughs> at BYU, so you can trust everything he says. This podcast, I personally love all my gospel conversations with Stefan. Thank you. So, I love um, talking with you too. Well, I just set you up for that. <laughs> Because we're the good news, I want to talk about, hey, what is the good news about uh, the gospel? What's the good news about being a person of faith? What's reviving about that? We take general conference talks as our fire starters. We're going to take the headlines, the good news headlines from all of their, their talks. Now, we go kind of in a random order, just so you know. Just keep things spicy, keep you on your toes. If you go over to Good News Brand, you can go to goodnewsbrandco.com or the Good News Brand Co. Instagram account, and you'll be able to find really easily the schedule of those talks that we're going to be in. So if, you, if you're the kind of person who wants to read it ahead of time or, or whatever, hopefully these like inspire you to go listen to them again and study them again. And uh, you can find the schedule there. You can also find a wide margin version of general conference that you can print out if you like to have a printed copy it's and free. write. Yeah. Yeah. Just download that. It's a free PDF. If you're local in Utah Valley, our local, we're, this is where we are. Um, Pioneer Party in Lehigh, they have them available, like printed and spiral bound already. And you can go there or just any place you can get them printed any place. Download that PDF, print them out. If you like to have a wide margin study for the next six months. So that will also have like the schedule in it too. So Anyways, that's what you would need. Or just get your phone, print it out like I just did today because I forgot to go print out <laughs> my wide margin. I like that wide margin so much. So anyways, I think that's all you need to know. And then, right? If you were to explain to someone outside of our tradition, kind of what general conference is in two sentences, what would you say? Two or three sentences, what would you say conferences? Restored Christianity, Super Bowl. <laughs> you rename it that? Yeah, well, it might get more likes, uh, more views. Just kidding. I, I think I would say it's, um, it's a chance to gather together as saints to recenter our hearts on the fundamental truths of Christianity. That's, what, that's how I think I would, that's my, that's a write up I'd put, you know, on YouTube or something like that underneath. That sounded probably too fancy, but. Really, I love the gathering aspect, and we're a people who believe in a special endowment, a gift to normal people who've been endowed and gifted with uh, the gifts of seership and prophecy and revelation, and it's a chance in particular, I think, to hear from them and get a little bit more of the mind and the will of God. It's a living scripture, living revelation. Um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about like restored Christianity is God is still speaking. And one of the ways that he does that is through living prophets, seers, and revelators. So, yeah. And in some senses, if someone were to watch general conference, they might say, oh, you know, there's a pulpit and there's people who are speaking and there's organ and choirs. It's, it can come across pretty boring. Traditional. Oh, oh yeah, tra yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just traditional. But, but you just pointed out something that is is very unique in our tradition is that we believe that there are twelve apostles on the earth. That there's a first presidency with a prophet who uh, we we can give. We believe that they have the gift of seership and prophecy and revelation, and that they reveal the mind and will of the Lord to us. Yeah, yeah. Because for me, in a one weekend, it's hard. Like general conference is like, I like the weekend because it's chill and it's like on and like I have good snacks and foods and <laughs> stuff like that. So I, I really like the weekend itself and it feels set apart and different and elevated, you know, but to listen to talk after talk after talk after talk is like really hard for my brain. It's and like my three Super Bowls. Yeah. <laughs> my, no, no, no. I like, the, <laughs> I like, I really like the Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I, so like, but I love the six months after better. Because sometimes you'll take these talks one at a time and you're like, oh my gosh, I tuned out. I fell asleep. I didn't hear that. So I just, I really appreciate this, the six months after to 
one at a time, look at them and say like, oh, just give, give me more inspiration. Give me more encouragement. Give me more hope. You know, a bit at a time. It's like crammed into one weekend because you have to. Yeah. But I think it's intended to be a spread out experience. Right, right. Would you say that? I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. It seems like it. it seems yeah. like it. Yeah. So Make, how do we want to do this today? Did we, should we do our top? Yeah, we we do, we're going to do, do our top yeah, three. Our headlines. All right. Good news headlines, baby. <laughs> that's what they're, they're going to be. Mine are not in order of three, two, one. Okay. I'm not ending on my best. Are okay, you? I think I am. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. I might. Okay, go first. Okay. Fine. Oh, wait, we'll go one at a time first. You go first. Oh, okay, so this is three. You're number three. Okay, yeah. We didn't even find out if we picked the same ones. If we did, we're fine. Well, it's fine. We'll just yeah, talk have about those it. headlines. Yeah. What if we have different ones? I, mine's, you know, two or three, whatever. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Oh, I wanted to say this. I forgot. Today, we're doing President Nelson's talk. Oh, yeah. I was, about, I was looking. Rejoice. That's what I would have called it. Uh, <laughs> with exclamation point. Rejoice in the gift of the priesthood keys. He also invited us to study section 109. So today we're going to do the headlines from his talk here tomorrow. And by tomorrow, I mean in one week from now, we're going to do section 109 together. So FYI, if you don't have your schedule yet, look forward to that. So I was saying that, by the way, to say he does some 109 stuff in here that I'm saving for next week. So I may have picked it for my headline, Okay. some of that stuff, but I'm just reserved. I'm just saving it. Okay. okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. So this is my, uh, this is number three. So he's talking about the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple. And for those of you outside of our tradition, perhaps, uh, we believe in temples, what, and we call them the house of God, right? It's a restoration of, of temple practice, right? And this is what President Nelson says. The dedicatory prayer, which was received by Revelation, teaches that the temple is, quote, a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith, a house of learning, a house of glory, a house of order, a house of God. Now, often we read a, a list like that in scripture and we just hear a house of really good spiritual things. Mm -hmm. but I think it's important to really look at each one of those. And then President Nelson says, this list of attributes is much more than a description of a temple. It is a promise about what will happen to those who serve and worship in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so there's something about, I think it was Elder Maxwell who said, it's not enough just to go to the temple, but the temple has to get inside of us. Yeah, That's yeah. a paraphrase or something like that. But the very nature of the temple, of glory, of, of prayer, of learning, of order, starts to become a part of our nature. That's the purpose of temple is actually change our very nature. Which is such good news. We have something on the earth that can battle against mm. The other things that impact our nature, right? Netflix has a big influence on the world right now, right? <laughs> TikTok has a big right, influence. Right, right. The Kardashians have a big influence or whatever, you know, whatever you want to say. I'm glad we have something else on the earth that will push back, provide a place where our natures can be changed for the good and the better and the, you know, yeah. awesome. But, like we've said before, the sacred is what gives our life meaning and purpose and reverence is where we really get a sense of what's right and what's wrong and what's important. And in our culture, we're losing more and more sacred spaces. Mm -hmm. And the church is battling against that and saying, we're going we're gonna to build more and more sacred spots where we can connect with God and, and learn about his son. Yeah. And that just how general conferences are recentering. A temple can be a recentering place too, right? Yep. My favorite part of that headline, by the way, is house. I just realized as you were reading it, my new like thing for lack of a better word, <laughs> is I want to call the temple the house of the Lord or the house of God always. It feels like it connects me to him instead of temple can be so arbitrary to our faith, you know? It's like, wait, if you call it the house of God, you realize it is a place to come and visit with him. It's a place to come and be with him, to have your nature changed by him. Right. I'm so happy it's a house where he's just like, here, None of my neighbors have given me a key to their house, but Jesus gave me a key to like 118 of his <laughs> or however many we have, you know? And he's like, just come in, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Have, yeah. A, have a cookie. I wish they would give snacks there, but. <laughs> it seems so in line with his nature that his house would be all of those things, a house of glory, a house of order, a house of, you know, all of those things. And all are invited. Yeah. And above all, a house. Yes. A house. Yes. You know? Yeah. Anyways, okay, good, good one. Here's my top number one or whatever, three. three. I didn't, yeah. Okay, there's this paragraph where he talks about what happens in the Kirtland Temple. That was the first temple we built in this dispensation. And by we, not me at all, but other people, <laughs> but our people. 
built this temple. And, and there, something really significant happened in the Kirtland Temple on Easter Sunday, April 3rd, 1836. And maybe we'll get into section 110 next time mm -hmm. with 109. We might cheat and add that on. Where And he says this, on that day, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery experienced a series of remarkable visitations. And in that, if you know anything about that day, the Savior will come to the house and visit them. Then Moses comes and Elias and Elijah come and they, they bestow priesthood keys. But the thing I love, the headline I loved so much was that line, a series of remarkable visitations. Mm -hmm. I am thrilled to believe in and worship a God of a series of remarkable visitations. That he's not a one-shot wonder. That God is going to keep showing off and he's going to keep showing up. So that was my like good news headline. A God of se a series, plan on him showing up again and right. plan on it being remarkable. Right. And, and I didn't even point out the fact, plan on him showing up. That is remar remarkable in and of itself. Like, I don't care what you said. What he said was remarkable. What he gave was remarkable. But let's point out the fact that the fact that you came is remarkable. Mm. Like what? You, <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. Like you came to, you know? You came to my party, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of thinking about right, through a birthday right, party right. and you're like, you came? Yeah. So the fact that he's even willing and wanting to come seems remarkable yeah, that, to me. It says a lot about who he that's, is. That's a headline. That's good news. Really at the center of Christianity is that the idea of not that we're trying to reach God, although that's true and connect with him, but that God came to us, right? I was so excited. I almost like charped <laughs> in the middle of what you were saying because I sensed where you were going and I was getting so giddy, but I thought, I don't yeah. want to ruin it just in case it becomes a good clip on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mind shift for people that I think would be really helpful hmm. because I would argue to say there's a lot of people who are, who are saying, teach me all that I must do, you know, to right. get to you, which is true. an important principle right. and true, but I am a bigger fan of what you just taught. And and I don't know if this is too bold to say, but is it, say is, it. <laughs> is it too much to say that there's a series of visitations each day in small ways? Come home. That he shows up, well, it's through the kindness of another person, through just the right verse in Scripture, where you've had a hard day and you throw on some worship music, and he shows up. His spirit in the, in shotgun the, in the car, yeah. <laughs> sitting next to us, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And I think that uh, we don't deserve that. We're not worthy of it. And yet he keeps reaching after us. What was the Elder Kieran line that everyone loved? He relentlessly pursues. Right. Yeah, absolutely. A series of events. We worship a God of a, ser a series, you know, yep. of remarkable. That was so cool. Not a mini okay. series, not a one-time show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Here's the second one. Here's the second That's one. good material. That mini series <laughs> business. <laughs> this is what I want to say really quick. Uh, one of the things that excites me the most about restored Christianity is its sense of vision. It's a bold claim. We are not a part of just a church. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. It's a movement that started uh, through the prophet Joseph Smith. And that's a bold claim, what we're saying. And to kind of help us see that, uh, at least in part, I'm guessing, President Nelson says, consider how your life would be different if priesthood keys had not been restored to the earth. I knew you were going to pick that line. <laughs> I knew you were going to pick it. He says, without priesthood keys, you could not be endowed with the power of God. Without priesthood keys, the church could serve only as a significant teaching and humanitarian organization, but not much more. Without priesthood keys, none of us would have access to essential ordinances and covenants that bind us to our loved ones eternally and allow us eventually to live with God. Listen, do you know how I knew you were going to pick that line? How come? Okay, because Stefan and I both lead tours in Israel. And we will someday <laughs> again. <laughs> and we were talking about Caesarea Philippi, mm -hmm. which is the place in Matthew 16, Matthew 16, Matthew 16 yeah. where Jesus gives the keys in that dispensation. Right. Right. The Mount of Transfiguration happens right near there, probably mm -hmm. somewhere near there. But he promises them, at least in Matthew 16. Right. In that place by that water it's river. So, spot. oh, and I remember you saying one time, I was like, oh, I know what I would teach there. Like, I don't want to teach that we got the keys. I want to teach why my life is so different because of those keys. Yeah, as I was thinking about Israel, uh, you're absolutely right, Dave. I was thinking of what are the few spots that eternally affect us forever, mm -hmm. right? So if you're in Capernaum, you're like, 
beautiful, wonderful, life-changing, transformative stories and narratives about the love of God and healing, right? But there's a few spots that directly change you. Of course, Gethsemane, of course, Golgotha, the Garden Tomb, right? Oh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Die. I was like, <laughs> give, me, give my, my church favorite. a shout out. <laughs> that's my favorite spot. <laughs> uh, maybe. It's, it's, there's a few. There, you know, But that spot, Caesarea Philippi, is where God says, you got to think about this. This is radical. God says, I give you my power. You are now authorized to act in my name. The, the Pharaoh's ring. Pharaoh's right? ring. Yeah, yeah, here. And and Joseph is quick to teach that the second anyone tries to use this for control, dominion, or compulsion upon the souls of the children of men in any degree of unrighteousness, amen. Amen to the priesthood or authority of that man. You right. can't, that's not what we're talking about. But that key word that President Nelson said is this is an authority that's here to bind. Right. That's what it's here to do. Bind us to God and bind us to our loved ones. That's what priesthood does. It heals, blesses, and binds. We've talked about this in an in earlier episode. And we're not just talking about one church among others. We're not saying we're better. We're not saying we're worth more. But we're saying this is a movement. This is the restoration of all the fullness of biblical blessings and stuff that was we didn't even know about that goes beyond the biblical revelation given to humankind on the earth. Yeah. And set up with open doors. And we send people out. We'd follow the pattern of our master and we relentlessly pursue people and say, listen, it came to us. We didn't, you know, God brought the keys here and said, now take them to everybody else in the whole wide world. Amen. So, but I just want you to say one thing that you would teach Caesarea Philippi, like the practical way in your life today that right. you that yeah. you were impact you're, that your impact because he asked that question so give us one right so this is what i would say i would go to that phrase in malachi where it says it turns the hearts of the children to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children and i would say the sealing power and you know that quote from president Fowler, yeah, I just that's love. It, dynamite it's, it's epic vision but it's so practical in the sense that in your home today right our uh, hearts are being turned towards each other and making love deep and authentic and real and everlasting. Mm-hmm. Sin is so strong that we can't willpower godlike relationships forever. We need the power of God to turn our hearts towards each other and bind us, right? Yeah. I think I think that's what President Faust is trying to say there and I think that's one of the practical implications of of the sealing power. Yeah. And you can see it and I have this picture in Orlando Airport of all six of my kids like mm. Like surround, they were looking at something. I don't know what they were looking at, but I took that picture, not intending for it to have this kind of meaning. In fact, I didn't even think about it till now. And just seeing like that, that's an evidence of that ceiling power of six very different personalities, but they love each other and they're going to take care of each other the rest of their life. And I just, I like, I see it in like things like that. No, that's beautiful. Um, all right, here's my second headline. It's this one. When Jesus came as part of those series of remarkable visitations. It sounds like that. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I could have, it's about to derail us. All right. It says this. Jesus Christ then declared that he had accepted this temple as his house. And he made this stunning promise. I will manifest myself to my people in mercy in this house. That was my number one. It was? <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, I won't take the second part. I'll take the first part, then you save that other one. Okay, okay. Because my, the first part that I really, my headline is going to be that he accepted this temple. Mm. And I want to say, I'm looking at a picture of it right now, y'all. And it's okay. You know? I mean, it's got some nice windows that would be hard to cut out. It's no... um Sistine Chapel. Yeah. It's not it's, no, it's, Notre it's Dame. Not, it's, yeah. And it's no... Westminster. It's, it's not even... Uh, what's that ice castle one we have? San Diego. You know, that one's, that one's good. Whoever designed that one was on a roll. You know, you just... You're like, oh, you know? <laughs> but I had... A, and you could... Maybe you know better than me. Had a church history professor say to me one time that to date, if you take the poverty of the saints at the time, this would be the most expensive building that we've built. I mean, for sure, that floating one, that floating temple in Provo, you know, when, when it was on stilts, like that was expensive. But considering the level that they were at, and that he, ex- he accepted this as my house, and it just reminds me that Jesus accepts our trying. You know, like what we have to offer might look like five loaves and two fishes. It might not look, look, I was. But this was like, this is the very best we have. 
And we look at it and we're like, that's like, that's the best, you know? <laughs> but with what they have at their disposal, with the situation of their lives, they gave their very best. And, and the Lord said, I will crown this with my presence. This is, thank you. You know, and at that temple, in its plainness, is a reminder to a plain kid like me, get, hey, he loves what you, you're, he loves your trying. He loves what you are giving. Yeah. The, so. No, I, it's, it's beautiful. It's powerful. And but the very building itself testifies of, of the cross. All we do is just bring our faithfulness, mm -hmm. right? Our, our trying. And he accepts it. He justifies it, redeems it, saves it, sanctifies yeah, it, yeah. glorifies it. Right. It's an indirect uh, witness of atonement. Right. right yeah. And of course, as, as the church has grown and uh, we have more resources, of course, we would build more beautiful. To and, honor his right. name. Yeah, right. It's absolutely. our gift. Right. We'll bring our finest to you. Right. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. But, but even those, you know, they're, they're just our best. And yeah. He accepts them. Yeah. And, I, and that part of like in their poverty, mm -hmm. they gave it. Yeah. And I think there's people listening who you're like, you know, you might not have had the best growing up. You might not have had the best yeah. opportunities to increase your faith. And we're all in a sense in a place of poverty of differing kinds. And he's just like, thank you for what you gave from where you're at currently. And from who you are currently, yeah, I just, I love That's that. Awesome. Okay, now you can do the second part. See, I didn't, I didn't spill into your was, number one. That was so nice. So, so was, uh, number one, I, when he says, I will manifest myself to my people and mercy in this house. And the next line, President Nelson says, this significant promise applies to every right. dedicated temple today. We all, obviously, our spirits long for the presence of God. Just real fast, Dave, help me think of a list. We'll think of 3 Nephi and the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What happens when the Savior shows up? What happens when people come into his presence? So they get sight. Hearing. They can hear. They sins get, forgiven. Sins forgiven. Courage. That's right. He weeps, he weeps with them. Yeah. He teaches them. Sometimes he corrects them. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, um, he'll, he'll, in, in 3 Nephi, he asks, I think more than once, what would you like? What can I do for you? How can yeah, I bless you? Yeah. And so. Hearts mended. You know, right. broken hearts, like put back together. Right. So if you need that, go to the house of the Lord. Go get that. Go experience his presence today. Mm -hmm. And my number one headline from this talk, remember, I didn't put them in order, but it could be, is he puts these three statements together about the three sets of keys that were given. And he says this, the gathering of Israel is evidence. God loves all of his children everywhere. The gospel of Abraham is further evidence that God loves all his children everywhere. The sealing power is supernal evidence of how much God loves all his children everywhere. That's a headline of good news to me. Not only does God love all his children everywhere, but you will find evidence, you'll find further evidence, and you will find supernal evidence of how much God loves all his children everywhere. And I, to me, that's a headline and an invitation. Go look for that evidence of his love. Then look for further evidence of his love. Then look for supernal evidence of how much he actually loves. And I love thinking about living a life looking for evidence of the love of God on every day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Lord comes into his temple and he, we are blessed with his presence, we get supernal evidence that he loves us. Just as he came into this world, he came to the cross, came to Golgotha and Gethsemane, give his life for us. And he breaks into this messy, sinful world, and he starts to redeem it person by person <laughs> by person. And we can get access to those blessings in unique ways in his house. That's good news. Go tell people the good news that the house of the Lord has been restored in its fullness. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's one more grand gift from a loving father and son to their to their family. Yeah. That's good news. This is such good news. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see you next week, next Tuesday, and uh, we'll be doing section 109. So until then, ciao. <laughs>